on the show, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson and Academy Award nominee, Scott Hamilton Kennedy. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that you are an alchemist with the power to create the life you want. The definition of the word alchemist in a spiritual sense is a person who transforms things for the better. The reality is most people forget that they too have this innate power to transform their lives in any given moment in time by our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. When we are able to accept and believe that we are alchemists, we become powerful co-creators with the universe, with the ability to build and create the life of our dreams. The great news is that with this power, we also have the ability to change situations in our lives that no longer serve us by making different decisions and tapping into our personal power. We see proof of alchemists every day of people from all walks of life, from sports, entertainment, politics, or business, who through a strong belief in themselves and action have the power to turn their lives from poverty to being some of the richest and most notable people in the world. You too have this innate ability to be the alchemist of your reality and to make the decision today to start transforming your life by simply deciding today. As Paulo Coelho quotes in his book, The Alchemist, when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, this is a great documentary. I did have a chance to watch it yesterday and it's uh, very informative. So I, I actually am very curious to get both of your opinions on the vaccine and its benefits um, from a filmmaker's perspective as well as the scientific perspective. There's a line in the film that says it all, that vaccines can be the victim of their own success. I'm not sick. Uh, why do I need vaccines? Without realizing the vaccines are protecting and paving your way through life. The fact that cavemen life expectancy was about 30 years, 30,000 years ago, and the life expectancy of the world in the early 1800 was maybe around 35, changed by barely five years over the history of civilization. Now, uh, it has doubled, tripled our life expectancy. And that's not something to be toyed with. As a storyteller, uh, journalist, documentarian, father, um, I'm not a scientist. So I am uh, trusting in, um, not in the science, but in the scientific methods that were used to determine the quality and safety of these vaccines. And um, it was it was remarkable. As, as Paul Offit says in the film, it, I would call it a miracle. But it wasn't a miracle, it was hard, the hard work of, uh, of science. Wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. Next up on the show, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson and Academy Award nominee Scott Hamilton Kennedy. Neil deGrasse Tyson serves as the executive producer of the documentary Shot in the Arm and Scott Hamilton Kennedy as the director of the film, which we will be discussing in detail today. In 2019, I started working on a documentary about the rising rate of measles. Why is this happening? Because people are choosing not to vaccinate their children. And how some were trying to politicize science. I had no idea what was coming next. Lockdown day one. From the beginning of COVID, our family struggled to make sense of what was going on. counter disinformation in a compassionate way. We have to get good information out there. You were given a broken and beautiful world. You will take this world in your hands and make it less broken and more beautiful. Once the truth doesn't matter, then it's not a democracy anymore. Neil and Scott, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you both doing? We're good. By the way, the, when the universe is good, I'm good. It, it's Earth that's messed up, and that you all got to fix that. Just <laughs> put it up there. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about in this discussion. Um, so, Neil, you are the executive producer of Shot in the Arm, as well as Scott, you are the director of this documentary. So let's get into it. How did you two join forces to create this documentary? Well, we met on my previous film called Food Evolution, which was a reset of the conversation on GMOs. Sadly, there's a lot of disinformation and uh, misinformation 
uh, um, and spin around that conversation. And Neil was kind enough to come on board as our narrator and script consultant on that. And then when I got into making a shot in the arm and I had like a two hour rough cut, I was grateful to see that he had not blocked my number and he had <laughs> me to reach out to him and see if he would take a look at the film and give me some notes. And um, he gave me some, some great notes and decided to come back on as script consultant. And then I said, hey, let's go a little further with this. And uh, would you please come on as, a, as an executive producer and help me get this film as far out into the world as we can. Yeah, and I just want to congratulate you both because this is a great documentary. I did have a chance to watch it yesterday and it's uh, very informative. So I, I actually am very curious to get both of your opinions on the vaccine and its benefits um, from a filmmaker's perspective as well as the scientific perspective. Uh, Neil, let's start with you. Well, I, I think that there's a line in the film that says it all, that vaccines can be the victim of their own success. When vaccines work, nothing happens. Nobody gets sick from, from the pathogen for which the vaccine was designed. And so you can be led to a false sense of security in your health, saying, "What? I don't, I'm not sick, uh, why do I need vaccines? Without realizing the vaccines are protecting and paving your way through life. The fact that cavemen life expectancy was about 30 years, 30,000 years ago, and the life expectancy of the world in the early 1800 was maybe around 35, changed by barely five years over the history of civilization, mm -hmm. the, the, the pre-1800 history of civilization. Now, uh, it has doubled, tripled our life expectancy. And that's not something to be toyed with. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Scott, I'd love to get your perspective as well. Well, sure. As as a storyteller, uh, journalist, documentarian, father, um, I'm not a scientist, so I am uh, trusting in uh, not the science, but in the scientific methods that were used to determine the quality and safety of these vaccines. And um, it was it was remarkable, as as Paul Offit says in the film. It, I would call it a miracle, but it wasn't a miracle. It was hard the hard work of uh, of science. To be explained by the laws of science, science, yeah. Explained by the laws of science, thank you. Um, so yes, my, my, my opinion is I take each vaccine um, one at a time and see what the, the need is and I see what the scientific um, methods that were used and safety methods and what's recommended. Is it recommended to, to, to me? And in this case with the uh, COVID vaccine, of course it was recommended to all of us. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, during the pandemic, there was a lot of fear. People were very divided whether the vaccine would make them more sick or help them. Uh, so I want to talk about, you know, how does this documentary explore both sides of the coin? Because I feel like there were really valid points on both sides. Yeah, um, we, we, we worked very hard to try and tell the complete story, the both sides of it. And I see how you're using it, but can get a little tricky where people say there's two sides to this conversation. There isn't really two sides to the conversation on vaccines, the success of vaccines. There isn't really two sides to the, the conversation in terms of the um, checks and balances that vaccines go through. The two sides of the story are that there is a side of the story that is skeptical and dangerously close to often too cynical who have either become to fear vaccines or been led astray to fear vaccines. So we did want to tell both sides of the story and further still have a great deal of empathy for somebody as like a, a parent, a mother, who might be skeptical of vaccines because maybe their child is autistic and there's been a fake study that allowed them and clever communicators that allowed her to have that fear. To distinguish between empathy for that mother and great empathy, my nephew is autistic. The, I, I love my nephew as completely as I love any of my, my own children and my nephew, other nephews but that there's empathy for the difficulties that can come along with being autistic both for the person and for the families versus someone who has used that fragility around having an autistic child to manipulate and saying those people did this to you and making you vengeful and it's it's a it's a it's a terrible thing on many many levels to human nature to have to have something to blame something on as well yeah it was yeah. awkward when we still didn't have a cause for autism but then someone is pointing to a cause and then you feel righteous upon um, with that kind of identification. 
Yeah, what? absolutely. I mean, there there was a lot of fear. I mean, you know, having um, just people were very hesitant. So I like that this documentary really explores both sides of the coin um, in terms of the benefits of the vaccine. And I want to talk about, you know, the one th thing that's interesting is it doesn't just talk about uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It also talks about the measles pandemic. So I want to talk about one There's thing a whole I... movie right there, right? I mean, that could have been a whole movie, Scott, right? Yeah, we, we thought we had a, uh, quite a solid, uh, complex, tense, interesting movie in 2019 just around measles and anti-vaxxers. And then COVID took over and it just got more complex and, and, and more important. Yeah. And one of the points was that anti-vaxxers influenced the pandemic. So I want to get your take on that. Uh, Scott, let's start with you. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's just a shame that they, uh, well, you'll see in 2019, one of the top anti-vaxxers, uh, Del Bigtree, is being interviewed. I'm interviewing him in, uh, at the CDC in 2019, where CDC is wrestling with the record-breaking measles outbreaks. And to discount the vaccines and, all, and really discount the dangers of measles, Del Bigtree is saying, well, people say measles is dangerous, and you know, but so is drinking water, which I don't even know exactly why he would go to such a horrible place. But further still, again, 2019, June of 2019, he says, but if if Ebola was sweeping the country, talk to them then. As if to say, if there really was a dangerous disease and there was a vaccine for it, Del Bigtree is gonna be completely reasonable and have that conversation. And when COVID came, he did not. He doubled down and tripled down and, and spread more misinformation and confusion going all the way to him showing up at a, at a side stage on January 6th to sort of tie one conspiracy theory with another conspiracy theory and say, if you tell my lie, I'll tell you, tell your lie. And it's very cynical and dangerous. Mm -hmm. Especially when you rise to power and you have influence over others. Yeah. Otherwise in a free country, you know, who cares what you think? Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking about power, there was definitely a divide with the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, I think that also swayed people's opinions as well. So how do you think their opinions swayed vaccine hesitancy even more? Neil, let's start with you. 87% of people who died from COVID were not vaccinated. After the vaccine was available, right. Yeah. yeah. And five to one of those are vote conservative Republican. So to watch that, I actually tweeted that at the time. I thought the Republicans would say, wow, we better get vaccinated because we can't, we don't want to lose at the midterms by the number of people who died. But that wasn't the reaction. A couple of people reacted that way. Most were, were highly critical. Yeah, you shouldn't politicize science. Excuse me? It's, if I'm yeah. reporting what political factions are doing with science, is that political, politicizing science? Or, or not. I, I wonder if if COVID were 50% lethal, would an anti-vaxxer say, I don't, I'll have to take my chances with COVID. Maybe more lives would have been saved if the vaccine were more lethal than it is because no one would be questioning some other way to survive beyond the vaccine and everyone would be on board immediately and then it wouldn't have spread and wouldn't have gotten as many variants and the whole world would have been different had that been the case. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. It was the, the lethality was uh, a few in a hundred. Yeah. Maybe two or three in a hundred. Well, it's 20 times the death rate of the, the lethality rate of measles. Mm -hmm. 20 times. And just to see people treat this cavalierly, I, I found disturbing as a in a society where that I share society with people who don't yet fully understand what science is and how and why it works. Absolutely. But they don't embrace, they, they're leaving, like I said, two or three times longer. We need a little reminder bell every morning. Here's what science has done for you. <laughs> and just go up and down the list and maybe we just need better PR going forward. Yeah, I think if it was lethal, there would not be any anti-vaxxers, every single person. If it was more lethal, right, right, yeah. rather than just two or three in a hundred, right. So what's the most surprising discovery that people will find in this documentary, or even that you found um, doing this documentary? Oh, it's hard to not point to the Samoa story of 2018 and 2019 and Robert Kennedy Jr. and Del Bigtree's um, 
involvement in that in that tragedy that was quite surprising and shocking that uh, trying to do as quickly as possible that a, uh, a a a mistake was made where two babies were given a vac an MMR vaccine and it had muscle relaxant mixed into yes. it instead of MMR and they died and it's a tragedy but that led to the Prime Minister Samoa stopping all vaccines on the island which led to a measles outbreak 5,000 cases of measles almost 100 dead babies and sadly the anti-vaccine movement uh, let's say gently uh, took advantage of that and and promoted those fears. <clears throat> Robert Kennedy Jr. even visiting Samoa. Thankful, more thankfully, the Prime Minister of Samoa changed his mind, got vaccinated on television, and they actually stopped the outbreaks. The anti-vaxxers at no point said, oh, we're sorry, we got this wrong, and we agree with, with the Prime Minister, get your vaccines. They doubled down and tripled down and moved the goalposts. And um, it's quite a metaphor for the, the dangers of uh, disinformation on a fragile community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that the parents did uh, come on, even though they did lose their, their child to it. And did they did say there was an accident and they encouraged people to get Astonishing. vaccinated. Astonishing. I thought that right. was really uh, touching. So and glad you amazing. pulled that out. Yes. It's, and they it's, didn't that, have to do that. that. Nobody exactly. said they had to do that. Yeah. No, no. That's what we can do. We can be that decent and that, that humble um, to say, I'm not going to let, let this tragedy make it even worse. I'm so glad you pulled that out. It was remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. And what's been the most rewarding thing about bringing this documentary shot in the arm to the public? Um, Neil, let's start with you. Well, it's another medium, right? I, I write books and I have internet platforms and I'm on TV, all right? <laughs> but this is a storytelling medium where it's, it's, it's new for me. Yes, Cosmos is storytelling, yes. Um, but it's not sort of contemporary human emotions and how that would play into an understanding of a subject that will affect your personal health and the health of your loved ones. So just the impact, the medium and its power to impact the viewer is something beyond anything that I, uh, uh, that I had done. And, and yeah. I greatly value that exposure at least for my own understandings. Uh, and now it's m more completely obvious why a film has the power to be so impactful relative to a book. Yeah. Right? For any book that's made into a film, a hundred times as many people will see the film than will ever read the book. You know, it's, it's one of those things. So we know it intuitively, <laughs> the power of storytelling through, the, through a cinematic medium. Absolutely. It was definitely impactful because even for me personally, I was very hesitant on the vaccine. I think every, a lot of people were. I know my parents and everyone else was all pro for it. But after watching this documentary, it really changed my perspective. And there was so much evidence that you can't deny in this by watching this. So I think it definitely has an impact that's powerful, the messaging. So I, I um, commend yeah, you and I'd like to Yeah, and I'd like the possibility that it could influence people in multiple ways. You were saying the evidence was incontrovertible, great. Other people who are less evidence-driven, but are more sort of, oh my gosh, there's a school teacher, and there are nurses, and there are people, the children, who see a total human story, mm -hmm. and maybe that's what converts them over at the end. So the, 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 the film does work on multiple cylinders um, to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Scott, I want to ask you the same question. What's been the most rewarding thing about bringing this to the public? Thank you. Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's we we didn't know we were making a healing film. I guess is is what we didn't know, and it was it's with the distance from COVID. While we're still, you know, it still it is still around. We are more much more back to normal than we were a couple of years ago. And by the way, Scott, the fact that it's a healing film means it doesn't land as a traditional documentary, at yeah. least not to me. Mm. It feels like a different thing happening, yeah. right? Yeah. And, right. I mean, right. Because in a, in a in so many documentaries, well, it's either some very strongly delivered point of the producer, director, writer, mm. um, or it's it's learning time. Sit down and and okay. you know, uh, take yeah. notes, and will be tested at the end. This one just it was it was a healing encounter, yeah, with not only information but with people and their stories. And yeah. I think that magnified its value. 
Ab absolutely. It seemed sure. um, real people talk about these issues. I think that was amazing. And to see that they were also hesitant at some point. And uh, I know the nurse in the beginning said she was also hesitant and she changed her mind. And um, right. so it was amazing to see those different stories. That's uh, it's it's when you're talking about Gleema Marcus um, to see her be honest with the fact that she was uh, led astray by by disinformation and by her chiropractor recommending a, a dangerous book that was not scientifically valid and scared her away from getting vaccines. But then she had the humility to say, well, maybe I'm not getting the full picture. And mm -hmm. she went to from school and became a nurse and now is an incredible not only nurse, but science communicator and trying to counter disinformation in her Orthodox Jewish community in New York and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. And Neil and Scott, you know, my show is an inspirational show. I created my platform to inspire, to uplift and to showcase that anything is possible. So I always like to end the show on a really inspirational note. So both of you have been very successful in your careers. And I want to both ask you, what's the best advice someone ever gave you in your career? And that really inspired you, something you took away that really inspired you in hopes to inspire someone else. Neil, let's mm -hmm. start with you. Sometimes advice is there to be had, but you have to recognize it when mm -hmm. it's staring you in the face. It's not, well, here's the 10 things you should know. So <laughs> it doesn't always happen that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you can glean advice by the life experience of others when shared with you. Mm -hmm. uh, my father tells of when he was in high school and there was a, in gym class and you're standing in line and there's you know people would line up for gym class and uh, by weight or by height or whatever and they were going to use the track and field unit this was you know they just come from volleyball or basketball they're going to track and field and the gym teacher pointed to my father he's in high school can't be 15 15 pointed to him and said Cyril Tyson does not have the kind of body that would do well in track and field. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he thought to himself, no one is going to tell me what I can't <laughs> achieve yeah. in this world. Mm -hmm. So he took up track and field because of that. Nice. Yeah. And he would ultimately become world class. He had the fifth fastest time in the world in a race that, that's not run anymore, but a 600 yard run, sort of middle distance. Um, and he he ran in in the was it 1948 or 46 was it it was something called the GI Olympics because the Olympics wasn't um, had had hadn't been played in a while mm -hmm. and after the end of the Second World War they held the GI Olympics the various theaters of operations competing the European theater the, the Pacific theater the African theater they all competed in this sort of Olympics it was in Hitler Stadium oh my gosh okay so when I heard that I said. There are people who are discouraged and then they walk home with their head down. And then there are people who hear the discour discouragement and it lifts them up. Yeah. So for me, the greatest lesson there, it's not so much advice, but it's a lesson, is it's possible to take people who want to push you down mm. and flip it and have it become a buoyant force for you. Just remembering that no, they are not going to take advantage. They are not going to get the better end of you. Mm -hmm. And that could be yeah. so motivating. Mm -hmm. And in my life, wanting to become an astrophysicist in a world, in a time, in a place where if you had my skin color, no, you, you can be an athlete. Or you can dance for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can't or sing, but that's all. Mm -hmm. And so taking a path of most resistance, that was very important advice for me going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That gave me goosebumps because it's so true. You can take, it's all a matter of perspective. You can take a no as failure or you could just take it and motivate and be fueled. And I, I know when I get a no, I'm like, oh no, that is not happening. Oh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah. It's not happening. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it yep. to you and I'm going to do it. And that's been my whole career. So I got Excellent. goosebumps uh, you saying that. Thanks for that. And Scott, I would like to get uh, some advice from you too. What's the best sure. advice? Sure. Uh, it, it's, it's similar. It's, uh, it's be brave, show up and keep going, right? That, 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 that that's advice I've gotten o over and over again, because none of this is, none of this is easy, but you can't get anywhere if you don't show up, if you don't take the chance to tell a story, you know, put your, you don't put yourself out there in terms of communicating, you know, put yourself out there as an athlete, as Neil was just telling the story. So yeah, be, be brave, show up and uh and keep going 
And yeah. Scott, wait, but you you under told the be brave side of that. Mm -hmm. Let me just emphasize that there are people who might declare themselves to be brave by mm -hmm. taking a stance on something, mm -hmm. when if taking the stance costs them nothing, mm -hmm. that's not bravery. Yeah. <laughs> okay? The brave person is the one that says, I'm going to say this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to get shit for it. Mm -hmm. But I know I'm doing the right thing because it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. And so the bravery is the risk that you are taking by holding that position. The risk that Scott is taking, knowing that the entire anti-vax world yeah. is funded and it's it, and they've got charismatic leaders and one of them is even running for president. Yeah. Okay? That's brave. Yeah. I, I was just going to say that. I was going to say both of you. I commend both of you because, of course, you're going to get a lot of backlash and people's opinions on... No, I'm going to send all that to, to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know what? You did the right thing by informing people and, and showing evidence. So, um, both of you, congratulations on such a amazing documentary it's really been an honor to have you both on my show we're going to link all the information below for our viewers to watch the documentary shot in the arm i think they'll really enjoy it and uh yeah thank you so much for joining me today thank right, you. you got it thanks for your interest tag tv is available on roku amazon fire tv apple and android tvs as well as on apple and android phones watch live the youtube and facebook yeah.